Okay, this is uh, a 1947 North American Navion, made, of course, in the United States. It's one of the world's finest general aviation aircraft right now in use, uh, but it was made for military purpose. This is a, was built by a North American, as I said, in 1947. So uh, it was made particularly for a number of things for military use by, uh, by the United States Air Force uh, and uh, the Army Air Force of the United States, and particularly for VIP transport, for uh, artillery observation purposes, for uh, light transport. Uh, in fact, this aircraft, if you remember the Korean War and the time when the Chinese came back and came across the Yalu in hordes and, and, and uh, to press the Americans, uh, General MacArthur landed on a carrier in one of these to direct uh, a sea to shore amphibious operation to pincer the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, North Koreans. And, and that's what really won the war. So this aircraft has a pedigree and a legacy that is very favorable to uh, its reason for design. It is a very, very sturdy aircraft. Its skin is like, <laughs> like way different than you find aircraft today. It's a very, very sturdy aircraft, a military pattern all the way. It's a tricycle landing gear, so the wheels could be selected up and, uh, and uh, put in a protective uh, 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 line with the wing, underwing uh, line. Uh, this has uh, coverings that automatically cover up the wheels to provide uh, extra speed. This is, I have a small engine on this aircraft and compared to engines that are uh, used now for the Navion, this was uh, the, the engine that was designed for the aircraft. It's a Continental, uh, 185 horsepower, 205 horsepower for takeoff. Uh, and my son, for instance, has the same type of aircraft, uh, although not as pretty as this one. Uh, but his is, uh, has a, a much stronger uh, engine in it. And, uh, but in the formation that I led overseas, this was ideal for leading information, and uh, I was very, very happy with it. Um, Coming around, you'll see it has special vents for air. This is a vent for air because it can get pretty hot inside. I had wing vents put in uh, here on both sides. Uh, and uh, of course, the fuel, there's only two places you can uh, refuel the aircraft. It's through the right wing and through the fuselage. Uh, it carries uh, about 40 gallons here and another 20 gallons in the fuselage. And uh, it's quite a maneuverable aircraft. Uh, I can pull upwards of uh, three and a half to four G uh, in it, which is good. Not much negative. So, it, in, in terms of uh, aerobatics, not a not a great aircraft, but it's strong. And there's a there's a utility use for this aircraft uh, that will allow it to do basic aerobatics, but uh, I don't use it for that, and uh, uh, because it it sort of limits me in other ways of its use. Uh, when you look back here, it has, I put strobe lights in it for traveling across Canada today with strobe lights and, and what we call position lights here with the strobe lights allow, allows me to feel a sense of comfort from the fact that it sends out a very strong light and a pulse that other aircraft can see and people on the ground can see. It makes it much safer and prevents possible collision. It has big flaps so it has a very slow uh, uh, speed capability to land on the short fields. I've landed in as, uh, as short as uh, just a little over a thousand feet. And uh, I mean, uh, a runway like this, <laughs> it gives you plenty and plenty of room. Uh, the fuselage is, uh, is a beautiful design. You'll see this, this whole design here is very much like North American. A P-51 Mustang. So the tail is almost exactly the same look, the whole fuselage, the front, so it has that fighter look to it, which makes it really beautiful. Uh, it's a, and, and the amazing thing about its use that I use it for is in general aviation and information is that it has, is it's extremely comfortable and with the sort of bubble canopy on it, uh, and I upgraded the canopy to take the struts that would, would split the side uh, perspex 
into two. I, I now have a one-piece canopy on the side and can look around. So my visibility is really tremendous. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. And what makes it nice for, for traveling is that it's like a Chesterfield. You sit in it and I tell you it is so comfortable. So uh, I take my wife flying in it or other passengers and they're so happy just to sit back and it's like they're being at home. So it has, of course I use VHF radio so I can contact with tower and so on. Uh, it, the military pattern comes with flares so that you can use it for uh, forward air controlling of uh, artillery direction and this sort of thing. But, but I've had those taken out because it just slows the aircraft down. This thing, uh, when I flew across Canada uh, this time, uh, my average speed was probably in the area of 160, 155 to 170, and that's because I had basically had this unusual tailwind across this country. Or my normal uh, nil wind speed would be somewhere about 135 in that area. Okay, so I was very fortunate coming across. Uh, other than that, I think that covers it pretty well. It's got a tail hook here, which allows it to be towed, but also protects against uh, damage on a nose high takeoff at slow speed. Uh, great rudder control. This thing, uh, unfortunately, doesn't have autopilot, because I, I don't mind an autopilot, although I never liked it on fighters. But uh, uh, it does have uh, a, a good trim capability, so you can trim good hands-free. Not, not quite hands-free. It, it doesn't have an aileron trim, but a nice uh, a vertical trim. So that's pretty well sums up the aircraft. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I've got an awful lot of time on this aircraft. I've been flying it for over 20 years now. I bought it from a Vietnam veteran in, uh, in Napa, California and uh, hadn't flown for eight years and when I saw his advertisement in a, in a North American Navion publication I thought gosh I'm very interested in taking a look at this thing because it, he said it was unpainted and this is very unusual to find a Navion that's not painted and uh, as I say he hadn't flown for eight years and when he opened the door and he was actually uh, rather uh, handicapped at the time and when he opened the, I said, I've got to have this. This is just too good. It was very much like you see it. Not quite as shiny, but very much like you see it. And I tell you, for the money that he asked for it, I had a steal almost, you know. I was really so pleased to get it. And uh, it's really well known out in BC because the, uh, the organization that I, that I formed then out there was, of course, a formation team to do formation demonstration displays at various airports. And, Canada and north in Western Canada and Northwest United States, and this aircraft is well known. Any chance you could kind of show us the, the cockpit? cockpit? Sure, absolutely. Come on this way. We cleaned out everything in it, so it should be relatively relatively clean. This is now Kevin's responsibility. So uh, if, you, if you want to climb up here, I suggest you put your left foot here. Make sure you hang on to here. But I had this put in because I fell off the wing one time. And so that is uh, something you haul yourself up with. Put your hand on here, pull yourself up. We'll open the cockpit. So you're welcome to come up. Can I hold that for you? I think I'm OK. Thank you. There we go. He's very athletic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's this is it here. You see in the back seat, you can sit back there. It's lots of leg room. And I have when I came cross country, I had Freya sit there. This mount right here is basically for my GPS. I mount a GPS system, which is not there now, but it's all wired for it. And it's what we call steam gauge. So it doesn't have any uh, uh, whiz-bang instrumentation. It's not really ideal for uh, instrument flight rules flying. But other than that, it's, it's, it's a great airplane.
straight. Now watch yourself getting down. Okay. That's it. 